What is up guys, it's your favourite Scotsman Ryan here and today I am going to deliver my very first graphics card review on the channel and what better way to start than the new Radeon RX 480 from AMD. So this card is aimed at those looking for a decent enough gaming and VR experience without totally blowing the bank. So the RX 480 arrives in either 8GB or 4GB models and retails at £239 here in the UK while just $239 in the US for the 8GB models. The 4GB models retail at £173 and $199 respectively. So yes, we do get shafted here in the UK and things have only gotten thicker and harder since we decided to leave the EU so a big thumbs up if you voted for that. So anyway, I digress. Today's video is sponsored by Overclockers UK, who kindly sent me this card out to review. I will leave a link to their website down below in the description if you would like to go and show them some love. So let's take a look at the design of the card itself. As you can see, we don't have anything too fancy to look at. There's no RGB or sharp features, and we basically have a black rectangle design with a textured plastic on the front and two red Radeon logos. The PCB on the rear doesn't feature a backplate, but if you would prefer a reference design with a backplate, XFX have already released one and I will leave a link to that card down below in the description as it does look pretty sweet. The card overall is pretty short at 9.5 inches or 241mm and when you place it next to a 1080 you can see just how small it is. As you can see, the 75mm blower style fan takes up a decent chunk of the rear and features a metal housing unlike the plastic on the rest of the card and it's open on both sides as you can see. The RX 480 is powered by one 6 pin PCIe Express power connector as it only requires 150 watts of juice. When it comes to the video out, we have one HDMI 2.0B and free display port 1.4s, so you will be good for high resolution and refresh rates and the display port also supports HDR displays so it's ready for those next generation monitors. As there is no DVI out, HIS has included a display port to DVI connector in the box which is pretty cool. Overall, I definitely dig the minimalist styling and with such a short PCB, it will be interesting to see if anyone produces a smaller card in the future. So the RX 480 utilises the new Polaris architecture and the GPU used here is the Polaris 10 XT that is based on 14 nanometer FinFET technology. So we have support for DirectX 12 and Vulkan as well as AMD FreeSync, HDR as I mentioned and the ability to stream and record gameplay at 4K 60 frames per second which is pretty good as most gamers these days love to record that gameplay. It supports 36 compute units, 2304 stream processors and has a base and boost clock of 1120 and 1266 MHz and up to 5.8 teraflops of peak performance. When it comes to the software, AMD has introduced their new overclocking utility called Watman. It has a modern UI and is super easy to navigate. For overclocking, it's a simple process of just adjusting some sliders to your preferred numbers and obviously testing. I managed to increase the core clock speed by 5%, increasing the boost clock to around 1330MHz. Anything over that and things started to become unstable. I achieved this by increasing the power limit to 50% and I also managed to increase the memory clock speed to 2200MHz. I didn't adjust any voltage values as this has to be done by assigning each DPM state manually as there is no voltage slider but AMD has said they are looking to introduce this in the future. There is also a lovely graph up top for monitoring your system which is very handy and overall I'm a huge fan of the software. As for the temps, the RX 480 in its overclock state would idle around 34 degrees but when under load the temperatures could go up as high as 85 degrees. I would also like to give credit to the minimal fan noise here as even under heavy load the fans weren't too loud so for a reference design this definitely gets a thumbs up from me. Ok so enough of all the specs and boring stuff, I know you guys just want to see those benchmark results. So I didn't compare the 480 to any other card but I do have a GTX 970 and R9 380 in house so if you would like to see a comparison definitely smash that like button and let me know down below in the comments and I will definitely get straight on it. 
Okay, so the test bed I use features an Asus X99 Sabertooth motherboard with an Intel 5820K overclocked to 4GHz and 32GB of Corsair Vengeance DDR4 RAM. Okay, so all the benchmarks were done in Windows 10 at 1080p and 1440p as honestly, most people who buy this card will not be looking to do any 4K gaming and I also use the latest AMD drivers which at this time are 16.7.2. So with that said guys, let's jump into the benchmarks. Okay guys, so I hope that you are impressed with the benchmark results and my take on the results are that you get some decent performance for the money. Most games are playable at max settings at 1080p and if you do some tweaking to your settings at 1440p you will definitely have some solid gaming performance. I would definitely like to know what you guys think of the results down below and if you would like me to get hold of another card and do a crossfire performance video then definitely let me know as I would be pretty excited to do one. As always guys, thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any questions, just let me know. Stay safe, be kind to each other, and I will catch you on the next one. Peace.